It feels like we're getting a brand new BYD every month at this point, but I assure you this is more important than anything else. This is the new BYD Sea Lion 7, the new flagship of the BYD lineup with prices starting at just 184,000 ringgit. So let's explore the new BYD top end model to see if it's worth the money and more importantly if it actually puts up a good fight against premium vehicles like the BMW iX1 and Mercedes-Benz EQA. My name is Aman Abdullah, this is Malaysian Motoring and this is our launch coverage of the BYD Sea Lion 7. Now the BYD Sea Lion 7 is actually built on the same platform as what we saw from the BYD Seal, which is part of the reason why the cars also look very similar. The same goes with what's going on under the skin. Now there are two models available, being the Premium and the Performance. The Premium is a rear-wheel drive model, whereas the Performance is all-wheel drive, and there's obviously a difference in terms of overall output. Now the batteries remain the same at 82.5 kilowatt hours, where on the rear-wheel drive model that'll bring you up to 567 kilometers NEDC, whereas in the Performance it goes down to 500. 42 kilometers. However, the 0 to 100 sprint is significantly dropped in the performance, which does it in just 4.5 seconds, whereas in the premium, it does it in 6.7. Now, it is worth noting that these are NEDC quoted ranges, and so you should be able to expect something around 450 to 500 kilometers between the performance and the premium. What's perhaps more important is actually in terms of charging, because they've actually finally upgraded this at long last. AC charging for the BYD Sea Lion 7 is up to 11 kilowatts, up from 7 on the BYD Sea whereas DC charging remains at 150 kilowatts, which means 10 to 80% charge can take as little as 30 minutes. Now, because the BYD Sea Lion 7 is ultimately an SUV, it means that a lot of the design details that we've seen from the BYD Seal had to be translated onto this slightly larger package. So up front, you get these very thin LED headlights replete with a new double ULED daytime running light signature, which I think looks very distinctive. And we also see some incorporation of design language or design features that we've seen from the BYD Atto 3, like this big black panel down here, which actually feeds into air breathers in the corner in order to smooth and improve aerodynamics over the front wheels. BYD claims that the aerodynamic efficiency of this car is down to just 0.28 CD, which is part of the reason why this car is able to travel as far as it does on a single charge. Now, even though these cars are available as an all-wheel drive model, you will still find a pretty good amount of space up front, with more than enough room for you to hide your charging cables and potentially even some of your emergency bits and pieces. And so this does seem quite practical indeed. Now, BYD calls the Sea Lion 7 an SUV coupe, which is why it's got a very dramatic roof line to it. And again, that contributes to this car's very low coefficient of drag. Rolling stock is handled by a set of 20 inch alloy wheels wrapped in Continental Eco Contact 6 tires, which should be good enough to handle the performance available on this car. Other notable features down the side include quite prominent cladding around the wheel arches in order to highlight this car's crossover status, as well as flush fitting door handles, as again we saw before from the BYD seal. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I do think the side profile of this car is quite distinctive. I'm just a little bit perturbed by the BYD design badge on the front panel because I just think that's not necessary. The back end of the Sea Lion 7 actually reminds me a little bit of a Mercedes-Benz GLC and also a little bit of a smart hashtag 3, but I suppose that just depends on the angle you're looking at. Now, they say that this is meant to look like high-speed water droplets, which I think is a lot of marketing fluff, but I do appreciate the very thin light bar that goes all the way across. Now, other notable features include the dual-tier spoiler, again, to improve aerodynamic efficiency, as well as the very prominent rear body cladding, which is, again, in line with this car's aspirations of being a crossover SUV. Now, it is a little bit annoying that there isn't a boot release button here, instead that lives down here, where once you have opened the tailgate, you will find a pretty good amount of space. This is a little bit more practical than what you'd get from a BYD seal on account of it being more accessible and of course there is actually a little bit of space underneath the boot floor again to hide things like charging cables. This boot floor can also be lowered if you want to maximize space and the rear seats can be folded 60-40 for added practicality. There has been some impact in terms of overall practicality because in order to fit the 12 speakers for the Dyn audio system that comes with this car, some space had to be sacrificed on this side for the subwoofer. That said however, you do have some metal tie down hooks as well as a little bit of netting here in order to improve the overall practicality and of course there are also mounting points for a tonneau cover but I can't seem to find it. I've already found something I don't like about this car and that is there is no sunglasses holder. 
Now, the interior of the BYD C Lion 7 is a little bit different from what we've seen from BYD in the past, especially if you compare this to the BYD Seal. Because firstly, the instrument cluster is now integrated into the dash panel rather than sitting proud of it, which means that while your positioning is very nice, it's just a little different. What isn't quite so different is this central screen, because not only is it a comparable size compared to other BYD models, it also does the portrait to landscape rotation that we've gotten very used to from this brand. All the controls live in here, including those for the air conditioning, but mercifully the air conditioning is manual. So you know what, I think I'll forgive it for not having a sunglasses holder. You get a wireless charging pad here up to 50 watts, as well as a couple of cup holders here, which can actually be raised and lowered as and when needed should you want to have bigger drinks or or shallower ones. All you have to do is press these buttons and they move very convincingly indeed. Further back, you will find a decently sized center armrest here lined in felt so that things don't rattle about. You also have a decently sized glove box here. You get a couple of electric seats with ventilation and lumbar support for the driver's seat. But I will also point out that for the first time in a Chinese car, I now have angle adjustment for the seat base, which means I actually have some proper under thigh support. Now, what I do want to point out in this car that I haven't seen from BYD in the past is this steering wheel. This is a completely different design from what we've seen in the past. There's even a leather stitched central boss as well as more leather stitching around the wheel itself. Now what I'm very grateful for is that at least the buttons here are not piano black anymore and they are still physical buttons and so they work with a certain degree of tactility that is nice to see as more car makers move towards haptic touch. Now on top of that you also get the 12 speaker Dynaudio system that I mentioned earlier which should provide pretty good audible or audio quality. You get a very extensive ambient lighting system in here with up to 128 selectable colors, as well as the ability to pulse and rhythm the way it is now. And overall, stuff here does seem pretty good. You've got lots of really good material quality, lots of stitching about the place. You have these electronic door levers up here, which are quite nice and solid feeling. And overall, like I said, everything is as you'd expect for this price point. You even get a full glass roof with a electric sunshade, which means you now have the option to open and close it based on prevailing weather conditions, unlike what we've seen from the BYD seal. Now, the rear end of the BYD Sea Lion 7 is incredibly generous. With the front seat set in my driving position, about 170 centimeters, you can see I have absolutely acres of knee room and a pretty good amount of headroom despite that electric sun blind. On top of that, these rear seats have an adjustable recline angle, which means that at its most relaxed setting as it is now, this is very comfortable indeed. These seats are also incredibly supportive and I have actually a good amount of side bolster support as well for maximum comfort. Now, because of that incredible legroom, even though, as you can see here, sat like this, I don't have that much in terms of under thigh support. I can just stretch out my legs underneath the seat in front of me and then I have that under thigh support I want. I can also cross my legs should I so want to with plenty of space without scuffing up the seat in front of me. Now in terms of other amenities, I get a couple of crotch coolers all the way over there but they are very, very far away and there are actually a couple of USB ports hidden down here, USB-C and USB-A. I've got decently sized door bins, my door release is up here, I've got another pocket here for smaller items and I also have a deployable center armrest with a couple of cup holders and a small shallow but felt lined cubby here here for more things. I also have three pockets behind the rear seats, which means that there is plenty of space to hide things in here. And again, as you can see, the amount of space in here is very generous, which means that a BYD Sea Lion 7 could have you rethinking a D-segment saloon. Now, in terms of safety features, the BYD Sea Lion 7 comes as standard with level 2 semi-autonomy, which means in addition to things like autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, you should also be able to find things like adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist, lane keep assist, lane departure, warning, rear cross traffic alert, a fantastic 360 degree camera, and many more features as you would expect from a flagship electric vehicle. In terms of warranty, the car comes as standard with a 6-year, 150,000 kilometer warranty, as well as an 8-year warranty or 160,000 kilometers for the high voltage battery and high voltage systems. Now, for bookings made between today and the 17th of November, you will also be able to get a free home charger as well as 800 ringgit in EV charging credits. And in order to thank BYD customers, Saim Darby Beyond Auto is also extending a trade up campaign for existing BYD customers to get into a new BYD C Lion 7, although specific details on that campaign can be ascertained from your nearest sales advisor.
Now the BYD Sea Lion 7 is available in four colors with prices starting from 183,800 ringgit for the BYD Sea Lion 7 Premium and rising to 199,800 ringgit for the BYD Sea Lion 7 Performance. As I mentioned, all cars are covered by that same warranty and more importantly, this should be a pretty good contender in the sub 200,000 ringgit category, particularly for those looking for space, luxury and performance. Let us know what you think about BYD's new entry in the comment section below. Do you like the look of the car? And more importantly, what do you think about the name? Because having a number at the end is new for BYD. Let us know in the comment section below. In any case, that concludes our launch coverage of the BYD Sea Lion 7. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so notified every time we make a new upload. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And you can join our new WhatsApp channel. All the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We will catch you in the next one. Take care and stay safe.